So today we're going to read to you a, two poems and we will do that. Deaconess Allen will do that. We're gonna do two poems and she's, I'm going to respond to her poem. Find Us Faithful by John Moher and Larry Mayfield. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. May the fire of our devotion light their way. May the footprints that we leave lead them to believe and the lives we live inspire them to obey. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. May the fire of our devotion light their way. May the footprints that we leave lead them to believe and the lives we live inspire them to obey. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. And this is my response to find us faithful. As we come behind you, we surely have found and find you faithful. Your fire has enlightened us to strive to be more and to achieve more. Yes, your fire has such bright light that it allows us to see our better future. Your light allows us to shine brighter. As we come behind you, we find your love so strong and pure as we come behind you. Oh, we do find you faithful and true. Your footprints certainly have led us down a path that causes us to believe in you as well as ourselves. Yes, we have found and find you faithful and true. To do what you do for us, we say thank you because we do find you faithful and true. Found the answer. How many found the answer? Amen. Hallelujah. Ain't you glad you found the answer? Amen. If y'all don't mind, praise God. Amen. We appreciate everything that has uh, taken place in the house this morning and just grateful for Grandparents Day. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Give honor to him, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank God for the officers in the house. Amen. Thank God for you, the members. Appreciate all of true faith, amen, and the visitors, amen. It's just good to be in the house of the Lord another day, amen. Praise God. And the message, praise God, that the Lord is sharing, that God is such an awesome God because I can tell you, you know, it's just like uh, he always confirms his word, amen. Praise God. It's, it's just wonderful, and I just appreciate him for that. Praise God, and I appreciate, I understand that the youth is not normally here. We do appreciate our young folk coming and being with us today as well and as participating in the service. Amen. Praise God. We bless God for them as well. Amen. Let us go before the Lord with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you and we thank you for this appointed time to declare your word. Father, we speak now that your word will go forth unhindered, that the word may fall on good soil and that it may take root and produce the fruit that you desire in the name of Jesus and that the enemy shall not steal that which was planted, God, in the name of Jesus. But it will come forth and bring forth fruit for your benefit and for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray and bless thy name. Amen. Praise God. If you have your Bibles with you, are going to ask if you'll turn to Psalm 137. And if you're able, we ask you if you'll stand um, at the reading of the word. Psalm 137, beginning at uh, verse 1. Psalm 137, verse 1. And it reads, By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept. When we remembered Zion, we hanged our hearts upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song, and they that was required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of those songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, 
let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the root of my mouth. And if I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. Praise God. We thank God for the reading of the scripture. You may be seated. Praise God. And as we begin to look here at Psalm 137, it's if I had to use for a topic, because this kept resting in my spirit as I always go before the Lord to, to find out what does he want me to share at that particular time. And I kept hearing the phrase, let me tell you how. And then when I understood that this was Grandparents' Day and that the youth was going to be participating, it just all seemed to tie in together. But this phrase kept resonating in my spirit. Let me tell you how. And what I'm going to focus in on is verse 4. It says, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Now, when we begin to look at this particular uh, passage of Scripture here, we find out that the children have been placed in captive, and but they have been taken away from their land, and they've been placed over in Babylon in captive. So they were in a place that they were not used to. In other words, they were under the rule of the enemy at the time. And when they got placed there, because these were God's people, and they were used to singing the songs of the Lord and lifting up his name and giving the praise. Now that they were out of their environment and put somewhere in a strange land, they didn't really want to sing because they felt like that if they were going to sing in the strange land, that that would not be honoring God because the songs would be sung unto the Lord. Now, that was their perception on it. But as God began to let this scripture kind of meditate in my spirit, and as I began to reflect on it, I said, even in this day and time, if we look at our situation, we need to ask ourselves that question sometime in verse 4. How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Now, if you think about it this morning when some of you got up and you looked outside and you saw the weather like it was, cloudy and you thought that it might go rain or it may be stormy, you had to make a decision. Were you going to stay at home or were you going to press your way and come to the house of the Lord? See, the strange land is not necessarily another city. It can be another city, but a strange land can be just outside of fellowship with the Lord. And so what happens is when we look at this particular passage of Scripture and when we uh, begin to consider it, sometimes we're just going to have to think about it because sometimes we just didn't cross that T this past week. We didn't dot that I. And because we didn't do that, or matter of fact, we may have just slipped in, in a sense and did what we didn't want to do or what we had not planned on doing. And so when that happened, we felt bad about it. That's a strange land. But even though you made your way into the house of the Lord, the enemy is bringing back to your mind what you done last week. What you said, maybe you didn't speak to someone just right. And you knew that I didn't do it in the right spirit. I didn't do it in the right attitude. So now the enemy is reminding you, well, I want you to know that's your strange land. And as the children of Babylon had to think about it, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? I'm going to tell you how they can sing the Lord's song in a strange land. Because the enemy don't want you to sing the Lord's song in the strange land. So that's why he tried to get you in the strange land because he knows that when you let the Lord's song goes up, you're not going to be in the strange land again, but you're going to be brought back to where you were before you got outside of the land that you was at. Amen. Amen. I want you to understand, we can sing the Lord's song because we were taught from the word of God that we walk by faith and not by sight. In other words, we understand that we're not going to always understand this. But while we're down here on this journey, we got to go through some things to get to where we want to go. 
And we as the people of God recognizes and understand that this is just not our permanent home, but it's where we are right now that we are working our way to and through so that we can be in that permanent home that God has promised in his word. And so how can we sing our song in a strange land? We can sing the song in a strange land because we know what the Lord done for us, it was all because of faith. And because he's asked us to walk by faith and not by sight, then we'll be in obedient to the word of God. And as we begin to reflect in the song, it says, let everything that had the breath praise ye the Lord. It didn't say praise ye the Lord while you was in the house of the Lord, but it says Everything that has breath, let us praise ye the Lord. So that means whether I'm in the church, outside of the church, in the strange land, whether the enemy got his foot on me or whatever, if I got breath in my body, I need to praise the Lord. Amen. And the enemy don't want us to praise the Lord because he knows that if you praise the Lord, it's going to begin to change some things. It's going to change the environment. And what God was trying to get the people to understand there when they were brought over into Babylon, when they captured the folk and put them over there, and then they began to reflect, it was not that they had really forgot who God was. But they didn't like the fact that they was in the strange land. And they said, okay, now that I'm outside of my environment, we might as well just hang up the harps. It said that they hung them on the willow trees. In other words, the instruments and everything, they laid them to the side because they said, we can't sing the Lord's song in a strange land because they felt that if they were going to sing the Lord's song in the strange land, that they would be given honor to the gods of the land that they was in. But that was not the case. That was what they were thinking. And so what they said that we're going to do is we just going to hang up our instruments. Since we're in captive, we won't have to sing right now. And as you begin to do a little history and a little research on that, you'll find out that as they went to that land, some of the folk that got brought into captivity, guess what? They got comfortable with what was going on in the city. So, yeah, they quit praising the Lord because they got caught up into their environment that was going on, and then they began to participate in the things that was in the land of Babylon and went on about their business instead of re remaining with the Lord. But God always got some that ain't going to change and is not going to bow because things get a little difficult. Because when they get a little difficult, then those folk that know the Lord, they're going to say, just like you brought me out before, I know you're going to bring me out again. Just because I got in this situation right now, I know that I'm not here to stay. And because I'm not here to stay, I'm going to do what I know to do. And that is where we walk by faith kicks in instead of by sight. Because the enemy is always trying to pull us to look at what we see. We look at what our eyes can tell us. We look at what our body tells us because it doesn't feel right. But the God says it's all by faith. Just like you received him and accepted him by faith, we got to walk this word out by faith. So that means when it's not going my way, Regardless whether the job is acting crazy, the supervisor is acting crazy, where the craziness going on in the household, wherever the craziness may be, we got to understand that God is right there with us because his word reminded us in Hebrews 13 and 5. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you even until the ends of the world. So it doesn't matter where we find ourselves at. God is saying, I haven't forsaken you. You may have stepped away from me, but I haven't left you. So as long as he has not left us, that means we can come back in. We can come back in. But how can you sing the Lord's song in a strange land? You can sing the Lord's song in a strange land because you have made up your mind that you are determined to do what God asked you to do. So you're going to sing the song whether it's going your way or not. But guess what's going to happen? As you begin to sing the song, the atmosphere is going to begin to change. Things are going to begin to turn because now you have taken your eyes off of the strange land. You have taken your eyes off of your captivity and you begin to put your focus on the Lord. You're beginning to give his name the due praise. Because you know what? 
even when you come into the house of God, and if you just sit there and think for just a moment, the praise team, the choir, they be singing, and you sitting there looking at them, and they are singing their hearts out. They are moving forward, but you don't feel like clapping your hands. You may have had a, a busy week. Your body may be tired, but I'm just trying to get you to see some things. Is This body is not always going to feel like doing what it needs to do. That's why God says we are spirit, soul, and body. And it's the spirit man that's on the inside that is alive. This physical body is going to change as time changes. But that spirit man is the real you. And that spirit man is fed by the spiritual things of God. So when we begin to sing God's song, the spirit man is going to come alive. And it's the spirit man that gets the work done. Amen. It's not the natural man. The spirit man just uses this body to help you accomplish and to get to where you want to go. But it's that spirit man that's the real you. So when you begin to sing God's song, guess what? The enemy has to begin to lose his grip a little bit. But when you first begin singing, you don't feel nothing. Your body's still hurting. You're still tired. Amen? But if you keep on singing, you keep on singing. After a while, it's going to get the spirit man stared up. And when the spirit man begins to stare on the inside, you forget about how tired you was at the moment. You forget about this body may be aching right there at the moment because you are allowing the praises of God to go forth. And as those praises begin to go forth, it's breaking through the atmosphere. See, we're not fighting flesh and blood. It's not what we see around us that's real problem. It's the enemy, which is the spirit, which we cannot see. But when we do what God asks us to do, then we are engaging in spiritual warfare at that time. And when we realize who the enemy is and who we're fighting, not one another, but we are fighting this good faith, good fight of faith, and we are fighting the enemy with the spirit because you got to fight in the spirit with the spirit. You can't fight the spirit with flesh and blood. You'll lose every time. That's why God said walk by faith and not by sight. Because he says if you walk by what you see, you're going to be thrown off course every time. Because it never looks like it is. Now, it may actually be going on. Your body may actually be hurting. Your body may be in pain. But the word of God says that he is the Lord thy God that healeth thee. And if you want to receive your healing, then you've got to trust God and begin to declare that healing regardless of what the body is experiencing, regardless of how it's feeling, because you got to say, I'm walking by faith, but not only am I walking by faith because my Lord and Savior, he brought me out of darkness and put me into light. He has called me one of his own. And so my duty now is, is to serve him and give glory to his name. It don't matter what the physical body is going through, because as long as I'm honoring God, then God is going to honor me. And as God begins to honor, as I begin to do what I'm supposed to do, then I can begin to experience what God begins to work, because what he's going to do is use us to be the light to the world. Because there's some that ain't going to never open the Bible. They're not going to open this book up. And so the only Bible they're going to get to read is through you. So when they know that you are going through, but yet when you are going through, they know that you have not changed your focus. You have not stopped declaring who the Lord is in your life, that you have continued to let the praises go forth in spite of your situation. Then they got to stop and think, now, how can they do that? And then they're going to wonder, is I need that same type of strength. Then that's going to be your door open for you to share the word of God because we are called to make disciples. We are called to win souls. That's what this walk is all about. God didn't just save us so that we wouldn't go to hell. That's part of the packet. But he saved us so that we could be ambassadors for him down here, that we could be the light before this world to let them know his love for them and that he wants them to be part of the family of God because it's the Lord's will that none should perish, but that all will come into repentance unto everlasting life. That's God's desire, and we as God's people, we've got to be that light to help bring them in because he called us to be that light. He called us to be the salt. So when we walk in the room and the atmosphere is not right, 
arguments going on, you know, attitudes and stuff is in place. We're called to be the salt. So salt brings seasoning. So as the saints of God, then we got to be the season to cool things down and, and not get into what's going on. And we only can do that by demonstrating through the word of God. That's how we're going to be able to sing the song. Sometimes you just got to sing the song. And if you can't sing the song, sometimes you just got to hum a little bit. You just got to hum. Even if you can't get but so loud, even if it's down under your breath, guess what? It's enough to cause the Spirit of God to go to work on your behalf. Because if it's genuine and you belong to him, there's a connection going on. And when you connect with the Spirit of God, you can rest assured things are getting ready to change. That's how you can do it. And I want to just say to the, um, the grandparents as they were sharing those poems in there about you being that example and we being able to follow and defy. Yes, your life has spoken for you. The words of wisdom and experience and thing, your love and all of that, we had to see that in order to continue on because I can tell you my grandmother and my grandfather, my grandfather wanted a lot of a man with a whole lot of words and things, but he did do the correction and the discipline and all of that. But my grandmother and there was this older gentleman in the community that always would ask me to go to church with him. If, did I want to go because of his children didn't want to go with him sometimes and the other kids in the community and my grandmother would let me ride with him. I would go to church with this man and I owe it to him this day for my faith being where it was because he was somebody that understood faith before anybody even knew about all this faith walk and this faith talk that was out there because he used to tell me things as a child and I would share it with his kids and they told me, you believe everything daddy tell you but daddy don't know what he's talking about. Well, I was a kid and I said, well, I don't know about that. I said, but I believe he knows what he's talking about because everything that he tells me, when I go get my Bible and read it, it's in the Bible. So he got to know what he's talking about. But they said, no, you just believe everything daddy tells you. I said, no, your daddy know what he's talking about because it's in the Bible. When he would tell me something, he'd tell me where it was, and I'd go read it when I got a chance. And there it was, exactly what he was saying. And I remember this man the doctors had given him up to die about three times. And everybody was preparing for him to die. But every time I go visit him, he said, Nate, I ain't going nowhere. He said, because I got to work for the Lord to do. And until I do what God asked me to do, I ain't going nowhere. So I go back and tell the children. I said, your daddy said he ain't going nowhere yet. They said, the doctor said he ain't going to make it. I said, well, your daddy told me he was going to be up driving again. Nobody believed him. They didn't believe me, but I want you to know that in about a couple of weeks, God did a work in that man. He was back driving again, going through the community. And they didn't understand it. And so my grandmama looked at me. She said, son, it ain't always the leaning tree that falls. Because she was just trying to say, you can't go by what you see to determine what the outzult's going to be. It's all about faith and believing God. And that is where God is trying to get the body of Christ to today, is to learn to walk by what you know according to the word of God, regardless of what you're looking at with your natural eyes. My grandmother prayed, and she made sure that we stayed in church and did the things that we need to do because it didn't matter if we messed up. She won't going to give up. Them prayers was going on because I could hear her praying any time of the night in the house for everybody, not just the grandkids that she was raising, but her children and all. Because, you know, back then they called everybody name out. They prayed for everybody and called the name and stuff. They didn't have this little silent prayer. They prayed loud. You know, you hear them all over the house praying. And she used to pray all the time. But, see, those prayers was teaching me the importance of prayer. Now, did I know that as a child? Absolutely not. Just like when that man was sharing with me and inviting me to church, I did not know that what he was putting in me was to allow me to realize that I got to keep my faith in God and go by the word and not what the people were saying, not what the situation looked like. And that man, he went on after he started driving again. Nobody could figure it out. And then he said that he shared, he says, I was called to preach the word. But he said, I wouldn't do it because he said, all the preachers I knew could sing. And he said, I couldn't sing a bit. 
And so he said, I won't go get up there and preach because all the preachers he knew that could sing. And he was going ba based on what they done and how they done it instead of saying, this is who you made me, God. I'm going to be myself and do what you asked me to do. And so, but we were talking, praise God. But he says, I got to do this thing. And so he went to the pastor and told the pastor about it. They put him up in the uh, pulpit, helped him get up. And he preached his message and stuff. And as he began to preach, he shared a few messages. And then he said, okay, now I've done what the Lord asked me to do. And then after he'd done that, he was satisfied. And won't that much long after that time that he went on to be with the Lord. But I share that to say is the man kept his faith in God in spite of what it looked like. He didn't give up because the doctor said he wasn't going to make it or he didn't have this much time. He knew in his spirit that he had to complete what God had asked him to do. And as a result of that, that was his drive. That was his push. And the young folk, I want you to understand and say to you today, just as these grandparents have made it to these number of years, praise God, they follow the lead of their parents and the grandparents before them as well. Even though you don't understand what they share with you all the time, even though you don't understand why they tell you certain things or correct you on certain things, take heed to it. Just because you don't understand it, don't discount it, but listen to it and reflect on it. Over a period of time, it will unfold and make sense to you because it's not going to always make sense because we don't understand it at that time. But if we hold on to it, then later it's going to come back to us and you say, oh, I know what they were talking about now. Now I understand. So when you're faced with that situation, then it'll be inside of you so that you can make the right decision at that right time. That's how you can do it. And I would tell the young folk, get all the wisdom you can get from these seniors. Pick their brain, as they say. Understand it. Listen to that wisdom. Because they got something they can tell you. Because see, they got the experience of life that you are yet to go through. They've experienced some things. They've made some mistakes. We've all made some mistakes, but they've learned from the mistakes so they can share with you so you don't have to do the same mistakes. But guess what? As you go through this life, know that the word says that God says he will never leave you nor forsake you. And that's the good thing about the grace of God, that even when we step outside of his grace, he's waiting with an extended hand to say, come back in. He made provision because it's his will that we not perish. So he's willing to take us back. But it's the enemy that tells you when you mess up, you can't come back. But I want you to know, you can me if you mess up, you can come back. But that ain't a ticket to keep messing up. But if you do mess up, God is right there to bring you back in and put you back in position. So you do not allow your circumstances, you do not allow your situation to dictate whether you will let the songs of Zion go up before the Lord. You must continue to allow your praise to continue to go up because God says everything that had the breath should praise ye the Lord. And every one of us walked in here this morning. Every one of us is breathing. We're in that house of God, and our praises should be able to go forth freely. But as this passage of Scripture reminded us, they was in a strange land, so they weren't with the, the, the normal environment where it was easy to praise. That's why when the body comes together with one another, we all got the like-minded in-house. We're here in one accord. We should let the praises go forth freely because we got to face the man the next day, and our supervisor might not love the Lord like we do, might not even know him like we do, and might not want to hear nothing about that Jesus stuff. Yeah, and tell you to your faith, don't come to me about that Jesus stuff. That's up to you if you want to believe that. Go on. I don't want to hear it. But you in the house of God, where the folk is here and understand it, hey, it's time to join in and let the praises go forth. Amen. So God's blessings can come this way. But the enemy don't want the praises to go up because when the praises go up, you take your focus off of what you're dealing with and your focus is on the Lord. And when you begin to focus on God, he knows that he's losing ground all the time. He's losing ground because he can't win. That's why the Bible says he goes around as a roaring lion. He make you think that he's bad. He make you think that he can do this and do that. But the Bible says he is as a roaring lion. And so when I look at as a roaring line, it make me think of a shadow. You know, you see the reflection. That shadow can't hurt you. 
But if you ain't careful, you'll let that shadow scare you. <laughs> you know how sometimes that folk, your own shadow scared you, you know, caught you off guard. That's what Satan tries to do, catch you off guard. Amen. Then it gets you in a situation and say, you done messed up now. There ain't no help for you. There ain't nobody going to love you. Ain't nobody going to help you and do all of that. He starts feeding that mind because if he can get that mind to think that there's no help, guess what? You're going to believe that there's no help, so you're not going to seek no help. But God wants you to understand that there is always help because he, it says, even when father and mother forsake you, God said, I ain't going to forsake you. Sometimes you can push your parents to the limit, but most of the time they ain't going to let you go, but sometimes you can push them there. They feel like letting you go there, but God says, even in that case, he would not leave you nor forsake you. That he would even take you up. Amen. And so then that's when you got to get to your point and say, wait a minute. I can do this thing because God is still with me. Right. Yes, I messed up, but God, I'm sorry. Amen. And I'm sorry, and I thank you for helping me and restoring me. And God don't give you the whole list of history of what you've done and all of that. He said, welcome back in, son. Welcome back in, daughter. Now you're back in. Let's keep moving because he's got a work to do. He's not judging. He's not keeping count. But what he's concerned with is, will you let the praises go forth? And so when they ask you how, let me tell you how. You can sing the Lord's song regardless of what land that you're in because of the Lord that lives on the inside of you. Because you belong to him and because you walk this thing out by faith and not by sight, you can still sing forth the Lord's song regardless of what your condition is. And matter of fact, that is what the word instructs us to do. I keep saying it over and over. Let everything that hath the breath praise ye the Lord. Because we were created in his image to bring glory to his name. So our praises must go unto him regardless of the situation. That's how it can be done. Amen. We praise God. Amen. Let the praises continue to go up. And when they go up, the blessings are going to come down. We thank God for his word. Amen. Amen. And as you've heard this word this morning, let me tell you how. Praise God. If you're here this morning and you're not part of the family of God, or you were part of the family of God and deviated and stepped outside, I want you to know from the word of God that the, the, the room is open for you to come back into the family because God is waiting with open arms, willing and ready to receive you. This whole thing, you receive the Lord as your Savior by faith, you're not going to always feel saved. Even when you've been saved for 15 to 20 years, you go through that period that you feel like the Lord is nowhere to be found because he got that stillness. But sometimes you got to go through that stillness because he wants you to know by faith that he's still there whether you feel him or not. And that's where we got to get to. Because if you work on feeling, the enemy will throw you off course every time. So it's not based on your feeling. It's based on your faith. And we're going to share with you the word of God uh, concerning your salvation. And then that way, when you accept that word by faith, then you're part of the family of God. And it's not based on how you feel. It's based on your faith in what this word says. Amen. So if you're here this morning, we'll give space for you to come. Praise God. And if you are part of the family of God or were part of the family of God and stepped outside, we want to give you space to come because the word says that if we confess our sins, then he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So even if I stepped outside and recognize I'm saying, Father, I stepped out. Now I want to come back. God is saying, hey, I'm faithful. I will restore you right back in your position. Only a God would do that. People don't want to release you. They don't want to forgive you. They don't want to forget. But God, he receives you right back. When you acknowledge it, he's ready to receive you back and put you right back in position. So if there's one, come at this time. Praise God.